the Lord God for your word. First Samuel 16 and 16. And the word of God read. Hallelujah, Jesus. Let our Lord now command your servants who are here before you to find a man who plays skillful. Okay? Who plays skillfully on the harp. And when the evil spirit from God is on you, he shall play the harp with his hand and you will be well. Thank you, Lord God. So Saul told his servants to find a man who plays well and bring them to him. Find a man who plays well and bring them to him. Woo, Jesus, hallelujah, Jesus. One of the young men said, Behold, I have seen the son of Jesse, the Babylonite, hallelujah, Jesus, who is skillful musician, a brave and competent competent man hallelujah jesus a warrior a discerning protest and elegant in speech hallelujah jesus and a handsome and a beautiful hallelujah jesus and a handsome man and the lord is with him key point right here and the lord is with him he not only had skills for the job he was he didn't just have the look yeah he had the look too hallelujah jesus he had all the skills he had the look he was the full package but the main thing it says right here the lord was with david that's why he was equipped for that assignment because the lord was with him listen hallelujah, to this. Jesus. Hallelujah, jesus. saul said hallelujah jesus send messenger to, to jesse thank you lord god send me david Send me bliss. Send me, insert your name, please. Send me bliss. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. Your son who is with the flock. Your son, hallelujah, Jesus, that's hidden. Your son, that's hallelujah, Jesus, that's the underdog. Your son, that's still in the background. Your son, hallelujah, Jesus, that's last. Your son, hallelujah, Jesus, as everybody is overlooking. Send me bliss. Send me, insert your name. Send me David, your son that's looking over the flock. That's not even in the house. The one, hallelujah, Jesus, you barely notice or you, and you pay, don't pay attention. Send me that one. Then David came to Saul. Thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah, Jesus. And attended to him and attended to him and Saul loved him greatly hallelujah Jesus and later David became his armor bearer this is how powerful this is guys on the first meeting the first meet and greet hallelujah Jesus Saul fell in love with David because David had everything he needed. David stayed in his lane he stayed with the flock he stayed hallelujah Jesus where he stayed in the plan of God. He didn't move beyond his grace. He wasn't looking at this person. Oh, my brothers, hallelujah, Jesus, get to do this. Oh, my brothers, get to do that. My brothers, da, 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 da. I want to be like this. I want to. No, he stayed in his lane. He stayed where the flock was. Stay in your lane, guys. Stay in your lane. Look. People are looking for someone just like you. The anointing that's on your life. People need that grace. People need those abilities. People need that talent. People need the wisdom, the knowledge, the skills that you have, the uniqueness. They need your uniqueness. Stop trying to be like everybody else. Trying to be, get this title, that title. Oh, I can do what she do. Oh, I can do what he do. I want my ministry to look like this. Stop it. Stay with your flock. Stay in your lane. It's important to stay in your lane. So it came about that whatever evil spirit was from, hallelujah, Jesus, from God was on Saul. David took a heart and played it with his hands so that Saul would be refreshed. So that Saul would be refreshed and be well and the evil spirit would leave him so whatever lane it is whatever uniqueness whatever abilities whatever plan whatever vision god has given you please i'm telling you to stay with your flock stay in your lane because once you move beyond your lane there's certain graces that are not with you all right, real quick, quick. This is quick. I want, I, I want to encourage you guys. So the reason why I say it's important to stay with your flock, to stay in your lane, right? You, you know, 
So we want this man or we want this, we want this. I can be a preacher, I can be a teacher, I can be blah, 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 blah. But that's not what you're called to be. So you're picking up mantles with spiritual warfare that's too heavy for your calling. Certain mantles carry certain spiritual warfare. And this is the thing, guys. If you, hallelujah, Jesus, prematurely pick up a mantle, if you prematurely step into a position that you are not destined to be or you're not commissioned to be, then this is what's going to happen. Last point. S something, sorry about that. Last point. So something that somebody else that's graced in that area, that's graced for that mantle, if, if that spiritual warfare come, <laughs> All right, that's a spiritual warfare, okay? That spiritual warfare is going to hit you so hard. It hits them so hard. But they can recover within two to three days. Something that they can recover into two to three days because that is not your mantle and you want to walk in that light. You want to walk in that calling because it looks good. You, that warfare hits you or hit us or whatever. We takes take us years to recover it may take us years to recover months to recover that somebody that's graced in that lane grace hallelujah jesus in that lane will recover within a matter of days so watch yourself stay with your flock 